What's up glue sniffers? Here we have a nicely painted mountain scene. If you missed how we get here, go check out the painting episode. I think it's finally time to finish it, which means some more acrylic painting, some weathering with oils, tree planting, some dusting, and don't forget this bunch of rangers who are waiting for some action. Let's go to work! We are in a mountain forest, right? So, let's give the terrain some moisture. First, I sprayed the terrain with tension breaker. Then, I mixed a dark brown acrylic wash and applied it where the moisture should be. I started with the grass turfs. Then, I moved to the upper floor. Here, I picked up the cracks around the stones. The edges of the road, where the loose material is, were also addressed. And for the end, I applied some random dots on the road. It's time to add some interest to the scene, which means painting small stones. I choose the same colors as in the painting episode. Keep the paint thick and paint different stones in different colors. Same story upstairs. It may seem time-consuming, but it's a nice relaxing technique. And it gives plenty of life to the scene. The stones gives life, huh? Strange, but you can see what I'm talking about. At the bottom I painted some bigger stones, but in this case you should thin the paint to achieve more subtle effects. As we are here, I will invite you to like, subscribe and hit that bell icon. It helps me a lot. Thank you! With the paint ready, I picked up the nails on the fence in neutral grey. The acrylic process is mostly done, and here is our scene after it. Maybe the stones are popping out at the moment, but it should be like this, because the further steps will turn them off. Let's proceed to the oils! When I know that I will be working with oils on a specific day, I put them on a piece of cardboard first thing in the morning. They need about 2 hours, so the cardboard can soak up the carrier oil from them. If you don't do this, working with them will be a disaster. And another trick. Prepare more colors that you are planning to use. Just in case. I started with Viridian Green, on the retaining wall. I will recreate some moss at the bottom. I applied some paint at the bottom, where I wanted a stronger color. Then I took some white spirit and spread the paint toward the top. Careful! Use very small amounts of paint if you are using it untinted. At the end, I used the saw brush and some white spirit to feather the effect even more. Ok, the effect is good, but the green color is not right. Let's correct it with some raw amber. This is my favorite oil paint for overall use. If you want to try oils, this is the first one you should buy. As you can see, we are getting there. I will also simulate some moisture with raw amber. I thinned it into a heavy wash and applied it in the crevices. When you are happy, you can do some blending. You have a million options. How thin is the paint? How heavily do you apply it? It is the surface dry or wetted with white spirit? And are you using a dry or wet brush for blending? It is difficult to describe, but if you haven't tried the oils, give them a try. You will not be disappointed. Raw Amber is also great for shadows. And the greatest advantage of oils is the drying time virtually stops. That means you have all the time in the world for applying and blending. I did the moss procedure on the rocky wall as well, but here I wetted the surface with white spirit first. Hey, we have another Patreon on the team. 
Welcome Barry Smith. If you like what I'm doing and you want to get a lot more from me for a small amount of money, pay a visit to my Patreon page. I will become your personal tutor for modeling stuff, you will get daily updates of my work and you will help me with decisions and wishes. Also thanks to my other amazing Patreons. I used ivory black to simulate some stains that are left from the water on walls. Take your time and play with the application and the blending. It is also good to look at some reference photos. Also, keep in mind that the effect will be more subtle when the oils are dry. But this takes some practice before you know for sure what you are doing. And here is another application for the oil paint. Titanium white straight from the cardboard applied by dry brushing. Make sure to pick just a small amount and then unload most of it on a piece of black cardboard. For other colors I would say to use a piece of paper towel, but controlling the amount of white paint on a white surface, well, you got the idea, right? This was done to give the rocks some light and some life. Be careful not to exaggerate it. Let's plant some trees. If you want to make those by yourself, check out my tutorial. It's actually very easy and quick. The branches can be moved around in order to fit the tree into the scene. If you are using steel nails for pins, you can simply punch through the dirt. Here, a lot of care was taken to select the right sizes and positions for the trees. And this is the final setup. If you don't want the trunks to levitate, just pick a plus screwdriver and make a conical hole in the terrain that will fit the trunk. Let's take a look at the entire thing. Well, quite good I would say. The trees were then glued with medium CA. You can also leave them unglued for transportation reasons, your decision. Because the vehicles will be put in strange positions, I decided to use some pins. I opted for this 0.8mm brass wire because it's flexible but firm. They will be inserted into the wheels. First, I drilled some holes with a 0.8mm drill bit. Be careful to drill the holes where the wheel will be touching the ground. And then, I inserted the pins with some medium CA. They are longer than needed, but as the saying goes, it is easier to cut than to add to to to. Time for some dusting. This is a very important step because in this case it will link the vehicles and the terrain. Tummy above is the perfect color for this task, and you should use it lightly. That means a full reservoir of thinner and just one brush load of paint. Let's see what we have. There is almost nothing, which is ideal in this case. I address the vehicles first. Just a nice light coat on the lower parts. Warning! The wheels should be completely covered, because, you know, they are kind of turning. Tu tu tu. Psst. God, I'm sharp today. And then I move to the terrain the edges of the street and the surroundings. Just think where the dust will go in reality. I also treated the pine trees, the lower branches on the upper floor and the upper part on the lower tree. Just be careful not to overdo it. Let's finish those wooden planks. I think that the frame is very important for a nice diorama, and as I see it, the modelers usually skip this part. But it is an easy step. I just took some generic acrylic black paint and painted the wood. You can't go wrong with black. Once you tried black, you never go back. Ok, enough bad jokes for this episode, I think. My badly painted US Rangers were patiently waiting on their painting stands. Now 
it's time to put them to work. If you want to see how not to paint figures, the full tutorial is on my channel. I carefully checked the places where the figure is touching the vehicle, and I touched those spots with extra thin CA. And also those vehicles are completely covered in videos, full step-by-step -step tutorials. I will invite you to check them out. I marked the spots on the road and drilled some holes for the pins. And finally, I put the actors on the scene. Hey, not so fast. Sorry, but I need another video for next week. It will be a full built video experiment with just music. And the second reason is that I must prepare for my second live workshop in Ljubljana for the Slovenian National Open Competition. You are kindly invited. I will be doing some terrain for a desert diorama. Which, by the way, will also be the theme for the next project. So, until the next one, be cool, be healthy and put some glue on the styrene too. Don't just sniff it, okay? Bye.